So, welcome back girls and boys, uh, after a few days of uh, us releasing the video on which we were talking about aerodromes and how it works, thank you Tiago, uh, we get several questions, so in this episode of the Armory we'll be discussing every single one of them and we will try to give you as much information as possible, so here we go! Welcome back boys and girls to the Armory! Here at my side I have the amazing Tiago, say hello to everybody Tiago. Hello everybody. That's a spirit. And uh, we're gonna go straight to the questions now. So first question. question. Compatibility issues. Okay, the software itself is quite uh, well developed to say the least. And it works with every single major DAW because the reason is this. It is not a virtual instrument. It's working as a standalone application that you have to fire up first before you open your digital audio workstation and once you open the uh, aerodrum software you would be able to use it as a MIDI controller because for example using logic as an example the way that logic is going to recognize the aerodrums is going to be like this MIDI keyboard but in order for that to happen you have to open first the aerodrum software and once you have it open everything should run smoothly so that way you shouldn't be scared of running into issues regarding the, the digital audio workstation that we're using this is a not racist product. Next question. Um, this is a question for you, Diego. How does it feel to play on it? Uh, to be completely honest, it, it feels a bit odd at the beginning. But I think it's one of the minor, it's only a minor drawback when, it, when it's compared to what you can get from it. Um, and especially because you can get used to it quite quickly. Uh, because as any drummer who's used to playing natural drums is used to using the rebound from the from the surface you play on if you're playing on nothing you have no rebound so that's probably the the thing that feels weird about it but we minor adjustments in technique you can make that work with no issues at all especially when it comes out now for drummers specifically when you're playing your doubles and uh, well, your basic rudiments that goes that usually would rely on the use of rebound, you probably have to do a little bit more of finger or wrist motions to compensate for that. But that's actually good in a way because you can actually practice your rudiments in a different way and actually get a better control of them. Like for doubles, I feel that my doubles when I go to the actual drum kit are a little bit more precise because I have to rely more on my wrist and finger technique than on the rebound so I can get more power in each of the strokes. Great. Also another question that we got, uh, and this is one for you Tiago, how fast can you play on it? As fast as you can get. Okay. The, the, there shouldn't be any issue regarding speed. We, we played from very slow stuff, from very fast stuff and never had issues with the response. The response of the software is actually amazing, it's something that I was really impressed yeah, in, yeah. The, in the beginning because I didn't really believe it would be this good. Uh, you can play as fast as you want and it should be okay. Great. So there you have it boys and girls. Next question. Um, the application of the software. How do we use it? Uh, so this question is going to be more for me. Uh, we use it for three major things. The first one is rehearsals. Why do we use it for rehearsals? Rehearsals first of all uh, that way we can rehearse at any moment in the day because thanks to the advent of technology we have the aerodromes and the aerodromes since they are relying on a digital audio workstation to work uh, that way you can uh, lower the volume of the whole mix and that means that you can rehearse in the middle of the night in the still of the night if you know what I mean also another application is uh, recording and uh, uh, coming up with ideas what do I mean with that? Uh, for example, uh, let's say that we came up with such a great song that it's still in the making. Instead of just using a shitty recording of our phone with our phones, what we can do is just open up the Logic, for example, and uh, record every single track as a multi-track recording. And that way we can have a proper representation of what we were working with and that allows us to have a, pro a better workflow. And another application is recording new music, because actually you won't believe it, but if you know what you're doing uh, with, with your software, you can come up with something that it's almost like, like a convincing sounding drum kit. 
of course we're still dealing with with samples and i know we hate samples we're rock and rollers but that's a good uh, that's a way better solution than just coming up with something that you record using your midi keyboard so there you have it also another thing that it's quite important to make to to to, to explain the the software itself has a huge uh, range of recognition when it comes to the velocity that means that for example you might be able to explain it better than i am um, when you're when you try to hit uh, the the virtual uh, the virtual drums softly you're gonna get a response according to the amount of movement right exactly one thing that i was a little bit concerned in the very beginning was about dynamics and of course you won't have the same level of dynamics as playing the actual thing uh, especially when it comes to the symbols, I'd, I'd say. But still, it's impressive the amount of dynamics you can get out of the aerodromes. It really, as Adam was saying, it really recogni recognizes a wide range of velocity. If you play it softly, it will come out softly. If you play it powerfully, it will come out powerful. Yep. So that's a, a really good aspect of it. But just remember that we're still dealing with MIDI. That means that if you are using a, a really, really a chip or Mm, for really really bad quality uh, MIDI library bro the, 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 there is more than one uh, possibility that it might not recognize or don't have that wide range of dy dynamic range so keep that in mind uh, another question responsiveness uh, this comes exactly out of what happened uh, on the on the first video uh, what happened there some people were concerned about lack issues and I wouldn't be uh, and I would and I won't blame them because there was a little bit of latency going on in that recording let me explain what happened since we were uh, recording the screen of the computer at the same time as we were as Tiago was performing there that thing created a little bit of a latency issue between the between the recording the, the video recording of the of the of the screen and also the recording of the of the MIDI signal and at the same time the outpouring of the of the sound out of the speakers so in simple terms if you use it for what it is supposed to be used you won't run into troubles as simple as that uh, but since we are trying to push the limits of a human of the human experience that's what happens when you're trying to to pretend to be God <laughs> so now, uh, I don't, uh, one of the other questions that we got was managing light, light management. Um, so Diego, can you give us a little bit of an insight? Okay, the light management can be a little bit tricky because that's one of the drawbacks of the, of the, the whole thing is that relying on lights, depending on how, on how the light of the environment is, you can run into trouble. So. Um, but it, it is a quite manageable problem, quite a man manageable issue, because you don't have to be in a completely dark room to make it work. You just have to manage your lighting in a way that you have you have no light sources um, anywhere behind you or anywhere that the camera would be directly facing. So, if you open the the setup screen in the uh, in Aerodrome software, it actually points out exactly. The, the areas that are, problematic. that are problematic. So it actually helps a lot because you can just have the setup screen showing exactly the points of, of light sources that you have to try and manage so it's not gonna get in the way of your drumming. So the, the software is nice that way, like to try to cover up for that, that issue. Perfect, perfect. So this is the last part of the video. What kind of tips or any recommendation that you can give to the audience? To anybody who might be interested in getting the the air drums, or maybe they already got them, but they don't know how to make the most out of them, I'd say the air drums are a really versatile tool. As we were saying, we have several different applications for it, and you shouldn't just ignore those different applications. Like you have them in your hand, like in your finger reach. So you should try to explore them. Uh, try to uh, use them with a with a with a digital working station. Uh, digital audio, audio workstation. Okay, yeah. sorry. Uh, and record yourself playing. Uh, and that's actually some uh, one tip that I would give to anyone playing any instrument is record yourself playing. And I think the aerodromes make that a lot easier for a drummer. And also, sorry sor for interrupting you, Diego, but uh, the aerodromes they come with built-in sounds. Don't don't think that you need to have a, a proper. DAW at your disposal in order to use them. You you can just uh, 
download the software, yeah. install it on your computer, and you're ready to go. Of course, the sound that you're gonna get is not gonna be as good as, as a proper sound library, but uh, it's good enough for practicing. Yeah, definitely. It's because we actually have been been uh, discussing professional users exactly. for Neurodome, but the, the software, the way it comes, is quite nice. It's yeah. really, really good. It has a lot of different functions. You can um, put uh, songs to play through the software so you can play along to them. You have metronome, you have a lot of different functions that are really, really helpful with, if you're learning, but you also have a quite a, a wide range of functions that you can use, especially using it in conjunction to a digital audio working station for a more professional application. So it's a really versatile piece of equipment. So there you have it, boys and girls, girls and boys. Uh, I think in, in conclusion, we love it. We really like it, I think, and both of us think that it's a great solution for any, any drummer out there. And uh, as usual, support our efforts uh, by listening to our music on Spotify, Apple Music, or any other uh, uh, the streaming service. Please subscribe to this YouTube channel. Uh, give us a like on any on any form of social media. You can find us on Asbardo Music everywhere in the world of the internet. And as always, don't let anybody tell you what to dream about. Keep rock and roll live, and we will see you where we see you.